What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Roblox Tutorials. Um, we're back in the Tycoon series. Um, what we can do, what we're going to be doing today is going over how to make a item dropper rather than just something that clones parts that we've created. Um, we actually want to create items. So say if we wanted like it to drop guns or it to drop like um, clothes or anything that you create. Um, we'd want to actually use an item. Now, to get into that, we'll have to look at the difference between dropping, because um, we'll go over what we, and we'll use almost exactly what we used last time, which is, um, if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go and do that. Hopefully I'll leave a key, um, or a card, sorry, in this video, um, to that video. But if not, it's just literally the, um, the previous video last week. So. What we, what we do is we go over the replicator storage and inside the replicator storage we get ores. However, if we want to actually create um, items, there you might be able to see the slight difference. So ores, because it's a singular part, we can easily get the C-frame. However, the moment that you it becomes a model, then you need to actually have a primary part. So the primary... Yeah, yeah, I'm different. Nah, I don't fit the system. Every part will be set inside of a model, but that's where we're actually making a C frame. So first thing we'll need to do is go over and start creating a part. So I'll make a very, really, really, really basic sword. Um, maybe a sword. Um, we'll we'll see what it turns into. So I'll just use my building FX because I like this better um, than the Roblox one, and I'm just going to increment them into different increments. Point one, and then we can just scale away. So let's just try and make something remotely good looking. I'm not trying to aim for a a video that's about modeling, however, for this one. So let's just make this and then duplicate this and then make it come out like this. Out there and then go back to this one. Control D this again, move this down, and then let's scale this inwards. Can we scale it down the other way? Where is the, oh, it's there. Right. So we have a very generically basic sword. Um, we may need to actually increase this so the textures don't bug each other out. Right. So I'll just give it Go like this and control G to make it into a model. Call this sword. Um, and what we want to do is we'll just add in some colors to it so like it makes it a little bit nicer looking. So we'll go for a, a brownie color and then, oh, I press cancel. Don't press cancel, press accept. So we'll go for a brownie color and then let's change this to wood. So press W and then you can get to wood faster. And then we might want to make the handle, we could have made the handle a circle, but for now it'll be fine. Um, we want to go back to this part, not this part, this one, and move it back slightly so that texture glitch doesn't occur. We will turn this one into a metal. And then let's give it like a, a higher gray hue. And then finally, we'll go to the handle. We could rename these if we're actually being good. So handle um, blade and the um, hilt I think this is called. Right so now we have a basic sword. What we can do is make sure that all these because if we press play so um, I'm going to put down a spawn point just to make it easier. So go to model and then spawns and then add a spawn here. So press this and there we go. We'll spawn there now. So if we have a look at this, it's all fallen to pieces. Now that's not what we want at all. So to fix this, we will have to go back into our model. Now this is a little bit of a modeling tutorial as well because we 
spawning item, so we do need to know a little bit about this. So what we can do is if we go back into my plugin, which is the building FX tool, just so I can move it. If we go like this, what we need to, uh, we're just going to make some space away from it so we can actually then weld it. So if we go over to model now and we go um, create a weld, we can actually create a weld from here to here. And then also inside of the hilt, we can create another weld from here to here. So now that that's weld together, what we want to do is we want to go back into the buildings tool or you can use the standard Roblox modeling and then move it into shape again. And if we press play this time, we shouldn't see it fall to pieces. It's still falling to pieces. Damn it. Why have you fallen to pieces? <laughs> um, okay. Well, that was a bad example. But um, let's just wait for it to... Huh? It deleted them. That's really weird. Maybe it's because I moved it. All right. We'll just... We won't move it. And we'll just go back to model, add a weld, and we'll weld that to that. So the um, handle to the hilt. And then we'll weld the hilt to the, the blade. And now if we press play without messing with it, it has stayed in shape. So that's great now. So we can actually move this around um, and we can actually spawn this. So what we also need from um, in order to create a destroyable slash usable item for a dropper, we need to actually add in a if it hits something. So if we look at um, the hammer, we've got check for collider, and then this will actually find um, if it actually hits something. So um, where is it? Or, so or equals script.parent. Um, but obviously that doesn't, that isn't actually what it is. And then we can, we need to set a price in here actually. So we need to go to um, our item click to our item, add in a int value, and then we'll call this price. Now, we're going to set this price to 20, and then we are actually going to add in the check for collider. So the check for collider is, um, if you want to co um, copy this, it will be in my Discord, not my Discord, um, my Patreon for free, um, but I will be making a module for this, so you can just use assets or import your own assets and I'll make a tutorial on how to use it once I've created it but it's a slow process while I'm at uni um, but all it does is it make it checks if you fi if it finds the collector and then when it finds a collector it adds money to this um, player so players dot my name and then leader stats this will be changed in the future but um, just not yet so now that we've um, now that we've got everything inside of the sword if we actually drag it into so close it and then drag it into the replicator storage produced items we can now call it inside of an item creator so if we go to our item dropper here and then control d this to duplicate it and then move it to the side we can actually go into this dropper script and then instead of the replicator storage, because we covered this last video, so I won't go over it too much. Inside of the replicator storage produced items, rather than ors, so replicator storage dot produced items, and then it can then we can select sword. So um, we're going to set this as maybe a faster timer, um, and then we will press play. Now, if the Roblox gods love me, we should be able to work. Oh. The one thing that we haven't actually done is um, I don't think we've assigned a root part to our object inside of here. So this needs to have the primary part. So the primary part, need, we can use maybe the hilt for this one because that's more, more or less the middle. Um, don't do that, please. Thank you. So click on primary part and then go hilt.
And as you can see, it's producing them, but it is throwing errors because um, it's not actually connecting. So head is not a va valid member. So if I click this, it'll take me to where it's having an issue. Um, and this is inside of the sword. Check for collider. So, or, okay, here we go. So we don't actually have a, um, we can change this to item. So let's do item. And then item, and then item again. And now we're going to check for whether the blade was touched, the handle was touched, or the hilt was touched. So this will actually destroy it instantly when it's found. Now this should throw no more issues because it was just trying to find something that didn't exist, therefore the script couldn't run correctly. And here we go. We can, well, I might actually, for a better display, extend this conveyor belt, just so we can see the sword. So let's move this over here. Oh, go into the plot and find the conveyor. So actually that's the collector, but we do need to move the collector this way. Go over here, a little bit further, and then go to the conveyor and I will actually go and use my plugin for this because it's easier to, oh, not the move. Right, so we've extended that and now I'll actually see the swords be a visible for a lot longer. So here you go. As you can see, the swords are spawning. And what's nice about this is we can then go and copy and paste this. So let's just see how long the video is. Um, it's only 11 minutes, so we should be fine. So. If we go into the sword now that we've created and press Control C and then paste into the workspace. Now we can actually do maybe um, magma. Magma sword, right? So we actually go in here and then let's go to the blade and then let's turn this to a red and then turn this to neon because it will have that nice little emission effect. Now we may want to add the hilt to be metal now because otherwise wood would set on fire i'm pretty sure um metal so there we go and then let's make it a uh, dark and metal and then if we can i would like to make this into a fabric fabric so there we go and then we'll turn this to a darker color there we go and now we have a magma sword so what we can do with this is we can just take this and move it down into our produced items and take our item dropper. So this one's the item dropper um, and I will call this instead um, hammer dropper. So let's just update this name. And then I will go to the other item dropper that was created, which is here and change this to sword dropper. Right, so now that we can now that we've done that, we can actually just duplicate it again so we can move it. Oh. I think uh oh, redo that. Then control D and then move it across. So now we have another one and we will say oh. Oh, it's not updating. Give it a second. Hang on. I think I may be having issues with Roblox, hang on, I will be with you shortly. Right, so we're back in Roblox and it's no longer throwing an issue. So what I want to do is go into the plot then go into this sword dropper and call it Magma sword dropper. And then if we go into this script, it's nice and easy now. We can do produced items and then we can do Magma sword. And we will set this to be a little bit slower because it's a nice sword. And in the magma sword that we've just put in produced items, we can then go and create the price to be a lot more. So let's say maybe maybe 100 because it's very powerful. It would make sense. Um, right. So now let's press play. And we've only changed two, two aspects. And there you go. We can sit you, as you can see, we've got magma swords. 
It is it is getting a little bit of a frame rate drop, but that's because one of the items is spawning in a weird position, um, which is the coal, because it's trying to spawn inside of here. As you can see, that just happened. So there's a lot of collisions being created at the same time, which is why there's a little bit of a frame drop. And also there's parts being created and moving. So that in, if you, as you excessively create more, then you may have to think about object pooling, which is a concept that I will talk on later, um, possibly. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to do it in Roblox, but I know how to do it in Unity, so I know it exists. But unfortunately, we're now over the time for this video. I'm sorry for it being a little bit delayed today, um, but I am trying to keep up to date weekly at least um, while at uni and once I've finished uni hopefully I can do more um, if I've got free time so that is it and I will see you all next week peace yeah yeah I'm different nah I don't fit their system so with the math class Zach that's a fact never backtrack ADD from life hack addicted to spitting rap angels on my back triple one triple one telling me to carry on